is 5.30. I will call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Alder Bellinger. Here. Alder Rust. Present. Alder Ramey. Here. And Alder Decker is here. Alder Peterson is excused. So we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, since we have quite a few guests here, we'll do just an introduction of staff and committee members. Uh, I'm Dean Decker, Chair of Public Works, old person from District 6. And I am Alder Ramey, District 5. And Vice Chair, thank you. Zach Ross, District 8. I'm Mike Luber, Assistant Fire Chief. Courtney Romer, Purchasing Agent. John Bellinger, Alderman, 2nd District. Casey Bradley, City Administrator. Kevin Jump, City Engineer. Tim Bull, City Forester. Uh, Joe Kerlin, Superintendent of Parks and Forestry. Uh, Travis Peterson, Public Works Director. Administrative Clerk, mm -hmm. Stacy Wesseljack. Uh, Rick Knight, Water Vehicle Supervisor. Mike Wilmes, Department of Public Works, and Joel Gold, CB Street Superintendent for DPW. Alrighty. Over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Liz Majera, City Attorney's Office. Gray Foss, Assistant to the City Administrator. Nick Wominski, Marina Manager. Jordan Skiff, Wastewater Superintendent. Alrighty. <laughs> Everyone's there. Okay, uh, we'll start out with uh, number five approval of minutes from September 24th, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Item number six, resolution number 95 24 25 of resolution adopting a Sheboygan waterfront and marina master plan. We'll start out with uh, Administrator Bradley. Yes, uh, so this is the plan we've been working on. Um, started actually prior to me starting here. So um, over a year now, they've been working on this. Um, essentially, the goal of this, this is a plan. This is not um, anything final. This is a document that allows us to start design. Um, so it's kind of more in a... Uh, comprehensive will as kind of as recommended in the plan we would look at different areas each area as we go through it we will go through a complete vetting and public process so um, as is kind of recommended in the plan the priority area would be addressing the marina and the marina facilities so we've got I think 600,000 we budgeted um, in the 2025 budget to start the process of designing that so you know, essentially what what the folks with Smith Group have done here is kind of take the community input um, on what the community would like to see. Um, and we'll start the process of designing those if, if council wants to move forward. And ultimately, each element will be designed, it'll be vetted, and then it'll come back to council for final approval before anything happens. So um, the reality is anything that's in this plan um, is a long way to coming to fruition. It might be 5, 10, 15 years for some of these things. Uh, some of these things may never happen. They may be, may be cost prohibitive. Um, I know they've kind of given some estimates at what um, they thought the different elements would cost. Um, obviously, um, we need a master plan to be able to go out to the various groups that would provide funding. Uh, we can show them kind of what, what their funding would uh, um, partake in all of this. So um, I know, you know, like if you look at, um, I think the, the marina layout, you know, we've got to do wave action studies. We've got to do a lot of things before we actually solidify what, what the marina layout is actually going to look like when it's all said and done. So um, as you can see, kind of where we're at the refine, we're going to continue refining that. This is just kind of the overarching master plan. Um, and then from there, each element will be designed separately um, or we'll group them together depending on what all needs to be done. Um, but this is not the final plan, the final design, anything like that. It's going to be a long time before we get to that. So, you know, the goal with like the marina, I know we have a lot of marina folks here. Our goal would be to hopefully get that designed over the next year. 
and looking into probably the 2026 cycle, um, actually getting those facilities addressed. Um, you know, if it goes really fast and um, we get all the approvals, you know, hopefully in 25, we might get some of the work done, but that's kind of the main goal is what we've been planning for is about a one to two year process of working through all of that. Thank you, Casey. Um, yeah, I, I, my comments on this are going to be brief, but I just want to do, uh, there are certain things in this plan that I love. There are certain things in this plan that I think are not feasible. Uh, I mean, I, I, uh, the floating buildings idea, I do not, I will, I will not support. <laughs> we, we are going to have to come up with a different concept or plan for that. The, 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 the thought of having uh, floating buildings on there, considering all the problems we've had with docks in the past, I would not support that. The uh, pier on the extension of, on, on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, I am fully in support of that. I think that's, I think for one thing, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to enhance the city itself. I think it's going to be a great asset for the citizens and for tourism. I think, you know, plus it's going to be uh, a buffer for the marina itself. So it, it meets all the criteria, I think, for, for of all the things that are on here. That's, you know, but there are other things in here that I also like, but I think it's, we have to have, we have a starting, this is a starting point. And as, a, as uh, Administrator Bradley said, it, it's going to be, each one of these things is going to be addressed one thing at a time. We're going to move forward, and you know, as the, and each one of these things is going to come forward on its own and on its own merit. So we are not going to be. This isn't like boom. What we're we're saying here tonight in two years, that's going to all be there. No, that's not what's happening here. It's going to be something. I mean, some of these things. I mean, uh, a good example is is something that's on the agenda later on is the um, the bridge that's going up. That was a concept 20 years ago. It's now coming to fruition now because we got the money. We've got we, we got a grant to do that. That's how some of these things are going to happen. We have to have a plan though in order to be able to get the grants. So uh, gonna open it up to Alders then and to their comments. Go ahead. So if you go to <clears throat> slide 14, please. This is more just a question for the master plan. So the arrows for the pedestrian circulation and vehicular circulation, would this master plan be mostly focused on that right there, like getting people in and out of that area? Would you yep. say that's what we're mostly focused on tonight? Yeah, well, it, it's the overall plan altogether. Right. Um, so what, what we'll do is the overall layout we would work with engineers and architects mm -hmm. as things are designed and try to keep it as true to, you know, this kind of general layout. The amenities may look different. Right. Um, you but know, I'm saying like the arrows, like we want people going yep. north, south and, you know, going to the pier and coming back down onto the beach and things like that. That's the yep. general idea of what we're yes. getting after here Yep. with the big green space in the middle with which may or may not have buildings or anything like that on it. Correct. Yeah, we'll kind of vet all of those through, um, you know, and that's each one has different groups that would be involved and different funding source opportunities for each of them. So, right. you know, that's kind of where we're at now mm -hmm. is that is kind of the general guide that we'll use as right. we work on design. And then once things are designed, ultimately council will have the final say, but um, with any public project, these will go through a public vetting. Uh, the Marina folks will be heavily involved with uh, layout. And then once layout's done, then we'll do our um, due diligence on way of action, things like that, to make sure that we're not creating issues for um, the Yacht Club or any other areas around there. So. Um, it's a it's a very long process right and yeah. you know kind of to uh, dean's point there the the extension on michigan you know realistically even if we wanted to start that now you're probably looking five to seven years out before you got core approvals and all of that that's i mean some of these things are going to take a very long time to come to fruition mm -hmm. also okay John. um I would just like to uh, commend the Smith Group and Casey and in, in your department, uh, Marie, you know, for for doing uh, um, the due diligence and getting us to this to this point. Uh, I thought 
the process was um, very transparent. Um, it was very inclusive for the people that wanted to attend those meetings. Um, and it wasn't just one meeting or two meetings. It was multiple meetings over a couple weeks. And um, I think they listened and they came out with a, a really kind of a unique plan. I've heard a lot of uh, feedback from different residents and I've received some emails regarding um, the cost of 77 million and that was published in the press and and where's this money coming from what are we doing are we approving this tonight and again just to reiterate none of that we're not committing any funds tonight where this is we're just going with the uh, this prove this master plan and again each individual aspect of this is going to be vetted um, but uh, I, I do like having um, some type of food venue or food trucks or you know having something down there to attract people um and i just think this is going to be it's going to enhance the you know what's what's already in ex ex existence we've had some issues in the past with the docks and maintenance and lack of maintenance and and things that have caused lots of problems so finally it's, it's being addressed and um uh, I'm looking forward to approving this and, and seeing what transpires. Okay. So I know that the big thing on this is the marina itself. That's mm -hmm. number one on this whole thing. So you're just saying it's going to take years, a few years, maybe yeah. next year, if we're really lucky. Would that, it'd be, I know we're making it smaller, like not as many slips, correct? Yeah. It, it's it's close. It's it's not bigger than the original spot. So I think right. it's about two forty ish if I understood. Okay. Right. So all right. So with that, this um, Tom Rogers from Smith Group. I'm I'm on and listening. If you guys can see oh. me, but yes, you're, you're in a, approximately the zip count that it was before. It's not. It's reduced from the original master plan zip count, which was substantially bigger. But we maintained roughly the zip count that you have today. Um, based on the study that Tim had done earlier with the voters about what was needed for that area. Okay. So then, with that being said, are we already working for a grant, or do we have to approve this to get a grant for the marina? We're actually working on a number of grants. Um, the problem is, absent having a master plan, we can't have any real right. discussions. Yeah. So um, the governor was here last Friday. Right. We specifically brought this project up. He said, once you have a master plan, contact my office. We would definitely be interested. Um, you know, they were successful in getting the Wild Center included in the last state budget. <clears throat> the idea would be to get some of this included into the next state budget as well. Um, we do have funding dedicated to specifically the marina. So um, the marina critical path, I'm a little more comfortable committing to a timeline. Design is going to be our biggest hurdle here. And then obviously, um, you know, it's that many steel docks is going to take a while to get produced. So, you know, I'm not sure what lead times are, you know, and I know on the electrical side, we're looking at 18 months to get stuff produced. I'm not sure what lead times look like for docks. So, um, and then we're gonna to have to build a building and, you know, so we've got a lot of work there. Um, so that's just going to take time. But, but first we have to get this. Part done. We need a plan okay. to actually start applying for grants gotcha. and, um, we had another group, you know, they're more interested in the park area and um, their funding is dedicated to that kind of stuff. Um, they're already slating us in the 2026, 2027 funding cycle that they have. Okay. But they won't have discussion until we have a plan. Gotcha. Thank you. I think you have a comment and then I suppose a follow up question. Uh, feedback that I've been hearing for years now is about. Uh, recreation and I'm really excited about um, the plan of you know the idea of the ice ribbon and and what it can be in the summertime and really activating that space and being an all kind of inclusive for, for all all the families in our community so with that being said I I I too am uh, it, it, not the marina life kind of person and I would I could see myself and the, the families that I know really utilizing that green space and that that uh, that other space is there if this plan moves forward does it have to be marina first and then this and then this can one thing be on the idea and then we kind of activate another plan first 
Yes and no. Uh, Funding is going to be your biggest hurdle there. Um, so we've got a lot of the funding needed for the marina work. And that's ah. kind of why we've kind of pushed that to the top. Um, we know it's going to take a lot of work to piece together what it's going to take to do the parks amenities. So um, just kind of, you know, bigger picture, we can fund like the road stuff with TIF. Mm -hmm. So we, we've we got in TID 21's project plan. Um, now that projects are moving forward in TID 21, that helps generate the revenue that will pay for these expenses. So we've got about $17 million earmarked specifically for this project. Um, in that, we can do all infrastructure related to the marina because that is a public infrastructure cost. Um, these red lines that are that pedestrian circulation and the vehicular circulation. Um, so you cannot do um, park amenities with TIF dollars, but you can do multimodal path. So anything over 12 feet is going to qualify as a multimodal path. So you know, looking at that circulation and kind of our design, we would look at all of those paths being 12 to 13 feet wide. So therefore they can be covered under the TIF. Um, and the same thing, um, you know, we can we can address all the infrastructure needs on the public side, but we can't use those for park purposes. So, um, you know, one of the groups we're talking to, you know, they're more on the conservancy side. So um, they've got a substantial amount of funding that they would be very interested in the rain gardens and things like mm -hmm. that. And any of the beach restoration, even some of the shoreline restoration, they'd be they very interested in how they could become a participant in this project. So um, piecing all of that together, it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the park pieces are going to probably be the largest. Um, moving the Lottie <laughs> Cooper is probably going to be the other really, really big one. Um, like there's a federal grant that just came out for preservation of historic pieces. Um, it's only $50,000, which should be a fraction of what we would need to move that. So, you know, working with, um, you know, potentially more earmarks like what we got for the bridge, mm -hmm. um, looking at federal assets coming in and helping with those aspects of the project. So that that's going to take several years to come makes to sense. fruition. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Okay. Else? All right. I know some of the public want to make comments. Um, I, I'll ask that they be, uh, keep them brief and uh, respectful. And um, I guess I will start with Brian. Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Brian Kelly. Um, <clears throat> on page 36, uh, there's a uh, Broughton Drive uh, reconstruction um, ideas. Uh, from what I could understand, option one looked like it was adding bike paths onto the street instead of um, that multi-use path. Um, I, I did help host the Ride with Ryan where we had, I, I, I want to say 40 to 50 people um, riding different bike paths in Sheboygan. And um, some of the feedback we got from that is that a lot of people did not feel comfortable um, riding close with traffic. Um, so that, that's just something that as this plan moves forward, um, as somebody who's advocating for bicycle pedestrian safety, um, I, I would not be a huge fan of option one where um, bikes are mixed in with cars, and I'm sure cars don't like having um, the extra conflict points with bikes. Um, I, I'd be much more in favor of that option two, where it looks like that uh, that bike and walking path is uh, widened. So um, just some feedback um, from some of the uh, groups that I've Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else like to speak? Here. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I personally use the green space quite a bit, along with several other people I know. We, if we lost that green space, um, we would lose opportunities for festivals. I'm a professional kite flyer. I. And we're not talking Dollar Tree kites. <laughs> um, and that is literally the only green space in a city area that we can fly our kites, even as far as almost Appleton. Um, there's nothing like this around the lake um, without going down like on the beaches and stuff. So it's something that um, Wisconsin Kiters Club um, 
We love to keep that green space. We had a fly, just a pop-up fly over the weekend, and there were hundreds of people coming up and just enjoying the view and the kites. And and we're interactive. We we talk with the public. There are a lot of people that um, always come down and appreciate what we put in the sky. I also go there, you know, just to hang out or. And other families do that too. They play flag football together, they're playing catch with their dogs, they're having picnics. There's not a lot of places like that in the city, especially all on the lakeshore. Um, I came here with a lot of comments, but I think a lot of them have been either answered or tabled, just given the nature of how you explain, you know, what the master plan is versus mm -hmm. what may or might, may not happen in the future in the timeline. Uh, so I'm encouraged to know that this is not just all going to happen. Um, I'm a boat owner, a slip uh, tenant uh, for the last couple of years. Moved away. From, I grew up in Sheboygan in the 70s and 80s. The land park was a huge part of my growing up. Uh, played soccer, uh, soccer practice there, fishing on North Pier, going to the Coho <coughs> Derby, all the festivals that were down there. Marina issues aside, I was really shocked to see what's going to happen or what is potentially going to happen to the park. Um, as the lady next to me mentioned, that green space is smaller. Well, she didn't mention that part, but that green space is smaller than it was in the 70s and 80s. But it is, as she mentioned, one of the largest green spaces, if not the largest, in Sheboygan. And for the kite flyers, which I have no vested interest in other than I love to see them, I would hate to see that go away. And um, Coho Derby is trying to make a comeback. They were in the park this year. I don't know. I mean, if we chop that park up like is pictured in that plan, there's not going to be green space enough for things like that. And to me, it just looks like it's getting jumped up with, you know, an ice ribbon. I don't think any citizen actually suggested an ice ribbon or even knew what an ice ribbon was until the planners suggested it to us. And to locate it there, I think that's been mentioned already tonight, it's literally the worst spot in the city for an ice room. It's, it's the coldest spot every single day, especially in the winter. We got north, northeast, east winds prevailing right off the lake, bringing sand onto the surface. It's wear and tear is gonna be much higher than it was designed for. It's gonna be expensive. The novelty will wear off very quickly and nobody will use it. The talk about putting it over in uh, Fountain Park, if you have to have an ice ribbon, that would be a much better place. Can't say I really support it there either, but not in Deland Park. We need to preserve the green space. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Go, go ahead, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm on the neighborhood board of the Ellis Historic District, <clears throat> and we are concerned about the community center, first and foremost. We have our meetings there, and there's nothing wrong with that building, and I don't see that building in the plan. So I can only assume that it's being torn down. I mean, no. is that part of the plan? Uh, that one will be, it'll be replaced. Uh, I'm not sure what picture that's. But why are we tearing down like a perfectly good building? Because they're looking at using a multifunctional space. So the building on the right hand side of that picture, that would become the public use space. Which one? The it's right the hand side. Restaurant public use. So it'd be a restaurant the front, on first floor front and second and story would be a right? public rental space. So it'd be there. And then what's happening with the Hmong Memorial? Uh, if you looked is at that last picture, there? yes. Okay. So the, so the plan is to actually thing as a, a talking point. So I wasn't sure. What no, there. If you look at, they've kind of set it up so it's more um, kind of distinguished off on its own. It kind of has its own area in the park now, okay. um, so that they they kind of planted the trees and so the sidewalk. Um, it's kind of got its own area there. And are there going to be changing rooms or yep. places to wash so the sand off? At the head of the uh, building number four mm -hmm. is a uh, bathrooms, changing rooms, and then uh, okay. I believe outdoor showers was the proposal. 
Okay. What about the flat roofs with grass? What is again? We're we're like not at that space? point. Okay. None of this is being designed. This is conceptual. This is the yeah. feedback. That's what they put on. So this is part of the master plan. Mm -hmm. This is not the building design. So you have to go through okay. that whole process. Okay. So because I'm hoping we would utilize solar or something, thinking in the future. You know, those efficiencies or something like that. Um, and I echo. Um, your comment about the ice ribbon, I think Fountain Park is a much better location. I know the sand blows all the way across the street, and I don't know how you're going to skate with sand all over it. Um, and then I was just wondering, like the Smith Group designed the plan, and now they've given another plan, and nothing has actually changed. So how did they incorporate the 700 plus surveys? into the second plan when nothing has changed. And can we see the survey results? Are they posted somewhere? Smith Group would have the results of that. Yeah, I'm not sure. He's on, he's on, he's on I can speak to that. This is, this is Tom Rogers from Smith Group. Um, two things to respond to your question. The first is regarding the the plan, the initial layout was done in the Charette when we were there. Um, we were there for about four days, and that was pretty rough. We, we laid out the overall content, and then we took that, and then we, we met with the city, and we did the survey, and then we drew the things in more detail. So there were, so there's been refinement to all of those areas based on some of the feedback that we heard. Um, at a high level, they look quite similar because the components haven't changed. What we heard from the survey comments in the direction we got from our, our working group was that the <clears throat> overall performance worked really well. We made some subtle adjustments to those. Um, we did post some of the, I believe we posted some of the responses um, on the online information as well as in this presentation where we summarize a little bit of what we heard. Um, and we can make, oh, actually it's not in this one. So we can add that to make sure that those responses are um, our summarized. Sorry, I thought that page was in this presentation, but I guess it's not. I will make sure that that's added. Um, generally, we were asking about what people's favorite elements were, um, what was working well, and what needed improvement. Um, we didn't get sufficient feedback uh, based on our conversations with city staff to change the direct, overall direction of the plan. Thank you. All right. Um, I'd, I'd like to say something. Sure. My name's Yannick. Go ahead. I definitely support going forward with the master plan and voting it in to start somewhere, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't support the uh, the ice ribbon idea. I think uh, uh, maybe that should be reconsidered. Uh, just the wind alone is problematic. Um, it does take a large part of that park up, uh, so that would be very concerning uh, regarding the green space. But uh, also. The ice uh, ribbon idea seems a little bit disjointed with the uh, way that the park is being used currently, and that is festivals. Uh, we, I'm, I'm on, uh, I, I support the Greek festival every year, and uh, we've had uh, the festival there uh, for many years in a row. Uh, I see the park getting smaller, um, and um, And, and also the uh, the surfing that goes on there, I don't see anything in the plan that's reflective on uh, and on on actually incorporating the surfing culture that's actually happening at that location. So uh, it could be like a surf clubhouse or something, but the ice skating rink or the ice skating ribbon uh, does not seem to mesh well with anything that's going on at that location. Thank you. I think it would be very picturesque in Fountain Park among the trees. We could decorate the trees. We could make it a very beautiful uh, park with the ice ribbon. It could double up as a farmer's market uh, with that consideration. But a different uh, uh, wow factor needs to be incorporated in that park if you want it to be actually uh, a destination for the, for the city. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, anyone else? All righty. Uh, then we'll move on. Uh, with this coming forward, um, I guess we would be looking for a motion. 
I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Move forward. Alrighty, resolution number seven, resolution number 86, 24, 25, a resolution author, adopting a special event fee schedule and, amend, and an amended equipment fee schedule. Uh, Joe? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, the first thing of, of the two items we're looking at is a special uh, event fee schedule. Um, we have not had uh, an event fee uh, before. We have the ability to incorporate that. Um, <clears throat> you can see in the um, in the document that uh, 2023 uh, we've had 81 that were actually approved, and uh, I mean 99 actually approved in 2024. This uh, we've had 81, um, and that does not include like uh, all submissions and things that have been declined. Um, we we I, I got I think Melissa's on too, um, Melissa. Uh, has done a tremendous amount of work for us um, with the uh, working on a new uh, special event guide. Uh, so this is part of that, and and then looking at our rates is all part of that also. Um, but so I thank you, Melissa. Um, a tremendous amount of work goes back and forth with especially especially new people that have new events. A lot of communication, a lot of emailing, a lot of calls. Um, it takes a lot of time. So I guess the one thing is we'd really like is is um, you know I don't I don't mind talking with people about their ideas and what they can do, but it gets to a point where okay, you know, it's time to put it on paper and 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 flush it through the whole city so the fire department can see it, the police department can see it, attorneys can see it. There's a time to do that at some point. And to put a little skin in the game, we feel that, you know, they, they, they need to pay a fee to, to do that so it can go through that process. Um, even getting to that point is probably a, a lot of time that went into it. And at some point they need to say, yeah, I'm going to go for it and see, see what happens or not. So uh, the request there is uh, for at least um, 60, 60 days before the event, a $50 fee. So it's not a huge fee whatsoever to just get some skin in the game, like I said. Um, it gets tougher as time goes by, so we'd like to, to, to double that for um, um, less than 60 days prior to it. So, um, and even even new events, older events, I, I tell you that a lot of events, let's just take broad days, a, a good example, is put on by volunteers that are not always there. So sometimes it's like starting almost brand new over, starting over with with the, the next person that's running it. So and that that's in a lot of different um, um, things, a lot of different events like that. So um, again, it's just a lot of work. So we ask that you'd uh, approve that tonight. Uh, the second thing is um, we supply the equipment for a lot of these celebrations. In fact, we basically really devote. Uh, one full-time person and then we try our best to get a good seasonal person to being available throughout the whole event season so that's their number one priority so um a, a, and then the upkeep you know the upkeep of the the anything wooden the dance floors the picnic tables the straight tables um we have this the, the beautiful stage um that was very expensive so upkeep of that and then delivery time so uh, we looked, we went through this. I could not find where the last fees came from. I really couldn't. I started in 2013 and I found a document that had these exact same fees from 2012. So I I, I did my best to try to look at back through the uh, council notes, but I, I couldn't find it. Uh, so these have been at least, um, least minimum 12 years, the same fees. So Tim, myself, uh, the park foreman, we went through each of these um, bit by bit and it's like, okay, so it, what's the time? You know, does it take two people? Is it one person? Um, you know, can you get many of them on one 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 uh, load? I mean, most of the stuff that we 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 uh, uh, store is at the Maywood Maywood the old, the old Maywood farm, so a lot of that is there. We do our best, to, our guys do our best to, okay, here's one event coming up. 
we'll go from that event to the next event. But in any case, it's it's a lot of time to do that. And it's not only the drop off, it's then picking them up again. If they don't put them away properly, it's uh, like fencing, re unrolling, re-rolling, um, cleaning grills, cleaning tables, they're just covered with stuff. So, um, so that's the reason we'd like to, uh, and I, I don't think I'd need to go bit by bit, but it's outlined uh, from where to where. And then it, we have a final fee schedule of, of what they look like. New things that are part of that um, would be uh, basically a, a minimum delivery ticket fee. So basically I want four garbage cans. Well, that's uh, two, four, six, eight. All right, eight bucks and it's gonna take one of my guys, you know, um, time to do that. So um, uh, just basically minimum fee of $25. Um, it's not in addition to, it's just minimum, okay? Uh, extra large grills. Um, we have two extra large grills that we now use uh, instead of um, some grills that we no longer use. So that's that's new. Uh, traffic cones and um, uh, so that and then, let's see. Yeah, I think that's that's it for new items. So any any questions on it? Thanks, Joe, for putting this together. I think this is really, you know, it's... it's, it's uh, well, Melissa did. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Melissa. <laughs> uh, it, it, I, I'm glad you guys, you know, because I, I think, that, you know, this is protecting taxpayer dollars. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're uh, I mean, this costs money. I mean, yes, people have events and they have to pay for them. You know, I, and I, I, I support this, so uh, go ahead. I have a, a question and um, a comment. Uh, my question is, did you all do any looking at comparable neighbor uh, cities or communities around the state and do they do something similar is this in line with with what others do just out of pure curiosity and two my comment would be just making sure that it is so beyond clear for everyone who would ever potentially want to do an event in the parks that it's very clear especially those who have done it in the past to get a letter or something like that and just that it's on the website it goes out there just so there's no surprises yeah this the special guide that met us put together is very well put together i mean I, and then every department's had a chance to put their input so um but i will say it, it, if i do a rental mm -hmm. if i rent something and i don't use it until six months later I read it six months ago, mm -hmm. and I go in thinking, so we have that all the time. Oh, I, I didn't read that. I didn't know. Well, it's, it's I, I don't know. You can't hold the hand, and I, I, know, I, I know I would be the same way. And, and so there's always going to be something missing. But the way we have things set up now is you, they, um, with the, the process we're using, they get an email from HeyGov. They get an email from us. I mean, they're getting these updates. So we're, we're trying to make it as easy as possible, but again, you know, you have that, well, I haven't done this for a while. I forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as pricing, as we were going through it, we'd kind of hit, um, uh, we'd kind of, I know Tim was going out to different rental places. Well, mm -hmm. if they rent, if you were rented from there, it's a lot more, you know, so we were checking on that. Um, but no, basically we were just kind of going off of, what we've had for so long, and then our time. I have a follow-up comment. Go ahead. Just, I've done a lot of events in my day, and I know I have total respect for how much work goes into it, and I completely understand. And I, I think that this is a really great way to, like you said, have some skin in the game, and and just you know, yeah, just to contri to contribute to it. So and I, I, none of the dollars, nothing jumped off the page as being extreme. So, good job, good job, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, John. I just have a question, Joe, as far as um, North South graduation. Does that affect that, you know, what they, I know that they pay an annual fee, or is that separate, separately contracted? Or, I mean, because I know that's a ton of work and a ton of equipment. And I'm oh, just wondering, I'm just wondering how <laughs> all that fits into this. Dude. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask, do we charge for the school? Stacy's saying no. <laughs> I was, in my previous tenure as an alderman, I was told it was like five grand a year. 
We do. I didn't think we did, but I wanted to double check. I, yeah, we don't. We don't charge the school. I mean, we deliver a lot of stuff, but they do the setup for the most part. I mean, we still have to set the stage and whatnot, but I think that's kind of a community thing that we. I think we charge. They were charged in the past. I mean, that's what I was told. Yeah. So. I, I never. But that, that was dinner, years I, ago. I, I didn't so. think they were. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then to my knowledge, um, you know, we'll do that with schools, but that's basically the only group that's really, a, you know, anything else that is supported by the city, obviously, like uh, Freedom Fest, um, that doesn't get a charge, all those, that equipment, but anything else, I mean, it's across the board, it's, there's, there's a fee for it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right. Can I, I guess. Can I say something? Sure. This is, I'm Mary Warner. I live on Clifton Avenue. Um, I also chair the Lobster Boil, so I'm real familiar with the Hay Gov site, and that okay. all works really well um, if you do it slowly. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so you have to have an event 60 days prior to the event. Apply for it. Yeah. Um, we talked about this in our neighborhood block parties. 60 days just to put up two barricades that seems like a lot when a lot of that is mostly planned really a, in a short amount of time we did the last one in my driveway because we weren't 60 days ahead just something to think about yeah. Yeah. all right nope okay i i move to adopt the resolution second Motion made and seconded. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. <clears throat> okay, number eight. Resolution number 8724-25, a resolution adopting the 2025 Marina and Riverfront slip fee schedule. Is that be uh, Nick? Yes. <laughs> hey. okay. um, Nick for uh, Warminski Marina Manager. So, um, trying to the purpose of this was trying to prepare for next year, right? So it's it's a little different than Florida and you know, tenants. I know Eric's here, so tenants and everyone kind of want to get a jump start on what they're looking at for next year. So that's why, just to put in perspective, why we're looking at this now. So um, <clears throat> just to start off, I guess a little history before I get into it is I put an email out of kind of a, I think it was around the second of September. Uh, kind of a, it was a proposal and kind of to gather thoughts of what tenants and what people think. And the original, it was uh, probably a, a little more panic uh, feedback than than I expected. So um, I went back and you know I looked and I, I met with some of the tenants from the river and then also from uh, the marina just to get some perspective on what would be perhaps a little more appropriate, but something that where the city um, can continue to grow. Uh, and then, but also that it doesn't necessarily totally squeeze the tenants and uh, have a, a negative impact. So what we went through just, you know, previously after running some numbers for the impact. So the way that the slips are set up right now, and this will change with the new Molo, but they they go by slip size, right? So when these guys are paying, they're paying for, if they have a 40 foot boat, they're paying, say they're on a charter rate, it's going to be 1800 That's what it was for this year. Generally a 40 foot boat is going to pay anywhere from 23 to 2700 and that's not the fault of the city or anything or people or whatever that's just the way that the system was set up going on uh total slip size so the impact of that just based on the river is was roughly it was eleven thousand. excuse me yeah eleven thousand seven hundred dollars in lost profit for this year on the river with harbor center it was um 1442 and 31 cents um <clears throat> so and that for the river, it doesn't include those boats that take up the entire well. Those wells on the river, and if you don't understand, I'll explain a little bit. So you've got a dock on each side. The well is what's in between those two docks. So that is where these boats are being placed. So if we have a 40-foot boat and their beam is, say, eight, it doesn't have to be 18, say it's 15, they're already with 20 feet, 28 feet in between. They're already taking up over half the size of what an actual dock. So it is physically impossible to put a boat in between these uh, these others, in between a 40 foot boat. So that's <clears throat> looking at the adjustment that I was making. The original plan was to have them pay for the entire slip since they're taking up both slips, pay for the entire slip. Um, and I went back and readjusted after, like I said, meeting with some of the tenants in River 
and it would be an additional $500. So the way that the riverfront rates would break down, it would be non-electric would be 1,100, and then the riverfront is green. So it would be 20, 25 foot to 29.99 as far as the foot length, which would be 2,000. 30 foot to 34.99 would be 2,300. And 35 to 40 foot would be 2,500. And if the vessel is taking up more than half the size of the uh, of the well, then they would pay an additional $500. And I think that that um, is a fair compensation. Uh, there are not, there is probably not a marina in this country that is going to allow a 40 foot boat to go on a 25 foot slip. It's just not going to happen. But to, I understand meeting with the charter guys, right? So I, I get it. They use that as far as they're getting publicity from people walking on the river and it's a great source. I'm not here to, you know, pick on the small businesses, which is what I would consider them. And so I think that this is a compensation that allows the city to still earn and the marina to still earn um, as far as not giving out for better argument's sake, a free free dockage. Um, and then the, the charter guys also get to stay where they are. So they're tying down on both sides. So instead of getting 25 foot of blank, they're getting a total of 50 foot of blank on each side. So it makes the boats more secure from a uh, safety standpoint, but also you know, allowing them to stay there. Looking at you know some of these other marinas, Port Washington, their 30 foot are 2,229, 36 foot is 2,700, and their 40 foot are 3,500. Manitowoc is a little behind, similar, 2100 for a 32, 36 foot boats pay 2425, and then 40 foot boats pay 2890, excuse me, 2895. So as you can see in our comparison, we're, we're still a little less, which I believe we should be, um, given we're, uh, that these guys are on the river. Um, and just be mindful that these are 2024 rates for Manitowoc and Port, and I imagine both of them will be going up uh, significant one, maybe not significantly, going up in the rates. So we're matching or getting below them on the 24, 2024 rates. Uh, and I would also uh, propose to get rid of the charter, the additional 20% charter rate. Uh, again, looking back, I don't, I don't believe, for my opinion, that I don't think charters should be punished because they run a business on the river. Um, so I would like that to not continue to for for this upcoming season. And for the looking at the marina rates that I had, they will go by uh, a quote like whatever is greater blank. So if the boat is greater, the sliver of the boat. If the boat is 30 foot, or the boat is 32 and the slip is 30, they will pay uh, the standard base of the slip and then they'll pay an extra two feet. Um, and then the pricing is based down based on the slip size. Uh, so for example, um, a 30 foot uh vessel in the river would be 1870. the footage rate for that is 62.33 per foot so it would be 32 would pay 1870 and then 62.33 plus 62.33 totaling in 1994.66 which is generally uh marina what general marina practices uh for the country as far as to go by square foot um and looking at that as far as the marina rates, they would be at a 10% increase from what they were this year. Um, looking at monthlies, um, <clears throat> not much changes the monthlies. The monthlies I put as they will continue to be higher than what a half season or a full season. It's the same way. I know I mentioned this here before, but the same as um, renting uh, an apartment. So if you're on a 12 month lease, you're paying significantly less than what you're paying for a month to month lease. Transient boats, we had it at, we would go up to $1.80 and then still follow uh, the $2 a foot if, if, the 80, if the boat is 80 foot or above. And I think that, you know, essentially covers everything, but I was, you know, I will say just on a side note that I was happy that I put that email out there. I know I put that it wasn't official, but I think some people maybe took it as official. Um, so I am happy that you know, the, the river and the charter guys all came down and, um, and then the marina as well and raised their concern. And it was great to get some input and, you know, go back there. And, you know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to, you know, certainly help the city and the marina become uh, more economically friendly, but also, you know, here to see the tenants and, you know, try and take their input as well. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. We work on this. Um, you have questions on this at all?
think it's so uh, Nick, I would just like to thank you for putting this together and uh, all your hard work. I've recently had uh, a few interactions with you and uh, have been quite impressed with how you've handled different situations. So um, you don't shy away from anything and you take ownership and I greatly appreciate that. And this is fantastic and I support it. Thank you. Any other comments? Look for a motion then. I move to adopt the resolution. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair sure, votes aye. <clears throat> that is approved. All righty. Number nine, resolution number 96-2425, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a memorandum of understanding with friends of the shop playground incorporated regarding the terms and understanding between the parties with regard to the playground design for the use by children of all abilities. I believe that we would like to fold this. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. There will be additional revisions to the contract and that will be presented to council at a future date. Motion to hold. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is, that is held. Okay, number 10, resolution number 98-2425, a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for two tandem axle dump trucks with snow plows and salt spreaders for the Motor Vehicle Division of the Department of Public Works. Um, Ernie or Rick? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, the, these two uh, dump trucks are part of the 2025 request. Um, they are not passed yet, obviously. Uh, long, there's a long lead time for, for this equipment, as there is for most heavy-duty equipment these days. Um, the, the trucks will be tandem axle dump trucks, but they will be set up for snow removal as well as, snow, as ice control. So they'll have the V-body spreaders in the back. Um, the only difference between the two trucks will be one of them will have a left-hand wing plow in addition to the right-hand wing plow uh, to be able to plow wider swaths of street at a time. Uh, the purchases, all the uh, chassis are purchased from Truck Country. Uh, they are under a source well contract actually they're under a state of Wisconsin contract and all of the upfits which includes the dump bodies, plows, lights, spreaders are on the source well contract and that is through Monroe Truck Equipment in Deep Pier. Well, thank you Bernie, thank you for getting us together for us, I appreciate it. Uh, Casey. Uh, just one point, the costs are a little bit higher, um, and that's because I've kind of requested that we transition more to brine okay. and get away from rock salt as much as possible. So um, you'll see a lot of the equipment that's going to come forward, um, and we will have an amendment uh, to the capital equipment list that was submitted, I think. What was the additional cost? About, about, about 200000 So $200, per truck. <clears throat> yeah, it increased our cost but it's going to drastically decrease the cost of the amount of salt we're using and then using brine it's more effective um, and then it's less corrosive less damage to the obviously the infrastructure you don't have as much infrastructure loss it's easier on the vehicles and um, it's better for the environment so it'll help with our stormwater permitting and things like that isn't there doesn't the dnr aren't they requiring us to do more brining is the is, is that kind of in the wheelhouse right now you no official requirement at this point but it, it, it but ties to our rolling. stormwater permit we sure. have to meet certain standards that's so, all right. compliance a lot better Got it. so is this 200 more than the 800,000 that's, no, that's being in here? No. That that's it. It's included. Yep. And we will okay. have. Um, so that's that essentially by spending that we get three trucks. Yeah. So some of that cost is actually a third the components for a third truck. So we'll get three trucks that now can spread brine okay. instead of when we have three additional trucks. We have six currently. Because I was shocked when I read the detail that 
the accessories are 200 grand more than the vehicles. I mean, because I mean, one of them is for another vehicle. Yeah. So, I mean, well, there's some expensive accessories you're putting on there. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a fraction of the salt that you currently use. Right. So, you'll get your money back over time and less wear and tear on the infrastructure as well. So, it, it pays, but it, the upfront cost is a little more. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Number 11. Resolution number 992425, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with HDR Engineering Incorporated for the design of a movable pedestrian bridge connecting the South Pier Promenade with the area of Riverfront Drive and Virginia Avenue. Kevin. <laughs> okay. So after more than two years of working with the Federal Highway Group over in, oh, in D.C., um, in early September, we got final approval of the grant, the raise grant, to fund a portion of this pedestrian bridge. Um, so the first step in moving that project forward is to hire a consultant to design the bridge for us. Uh, back in November of last year, we put out a request for proposals from consultants to to allow us to interview a consultant to determine who we felt was the best fit for the project. Um, as part of that process, we selected HDR. Uh, they do have a local office in Madison, but they are a worldwide bridge designer. Um, so after several months of negotiation with them and waiting for federal highways, we're finally to the point where we can present this to you for approval to move this project forward. Um, as part of the contract, it's not just design of the bridge. There is a public involvement component to this to work with the boaters and the community to determine what this bridge will look like, how it will function. Um, none of that stuff has been determined yet. We're still you know, we, we just, we had some concepts in our head, but until we start the process, we don't know what we're going to have yet. Um, yeah, that's really about it. Uh, any any specific questions? Well, uh, I'm excited about this. I mean, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, this is something that's 20 years in the making. That's, sometimes that's how long it takes to get the funding and things like that for this. Uh, I know that... We've gotten letters of support from basically every business along the riverfront on both sides of the river. Um, we've gotten, I've, I've talked to several people uh, in the Indiana corner in the area down there where some of the, some of the restaurants and businesses down there, they're all excited about this. I know the downtown people, a lot of businesses are excited about this. Uh, the support has been, been tremendous is from the business community. I believe this, this will uh, enhance that, that, that area and, 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 and spur development in the uh, the vacant areas that are down there yet. So uh, I, I'm hoping that everyone else is in support of this. I'll open it up to you guys then. John? Kevin, could you just, we talked earlier about the funding mechanism of this and, you know, the, you know, the, the city's portion versus the federal portion, you know, and just kind of go over that for, so that everybody is aware of that. So the federal share of the project is <clears throat> We'll call it 5.3 million. In order to obtain that 5.3 million, the city needs to spend 1.3 million, a little over 1.3. And we have uh, 3.5 budgeted in TID 21's project plan for this. So, as far as does this affect existing property taxpayers? No. This will be TID funds that will ultimately fund that. Thank you. Discussions, comments, anything like that. Make a motion to approve. We did have one public okay, comment. Oh, oh, question sure. um, did, and I am not super familiar on this, and sure. I know it's not necessarily time for questions, but um, I 
are bikes going to be allowed to cross that? Because I'm just thinking that 8th Street um, bridge is a section where I know a lot of bikers are not comfortable taking that rotary um, and then going over the bridge and cars a lot of times like to speed past bikes that are kind of taking that lane in order to make that right. So I feel like this would be a great opportunity for this bill for bikers to avoid that, just take the you know, lakeside, riverside, and then cross there and avoid that rotary. I know there have been people injured there. Um, so are, is there plans to allow bikes to cross there or? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be bike friendly. Okay. All righty. Uh, with that, then we have the motion. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair will sign. That is approved. Okay, number 12, Director for Resolution number 124.25, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to amend the agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Gulag Waste and Demolition LLC for demolition of structures located at 1211 North 23rd Street to allow for the demolition of the 1,200 square foot outbuilding on the property. Uh, Bernie, is this on you again? Thank you again, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, the uh, When we undertook the uh, project to eventually prepare a property for a new fire station behind the main building, there there is a 12,000 square foot outbuilding, basically a cold storage building. Um, and um, the thought was, Perhaps that building could have some potential use for the fire department down the road. Um, we asked and commissioned our architect to uh, assess the building, um, take a look at the potential uses that the fire department may have and how the building was configured for their uses. They have, they have performed that study and come back with a recommendation that the building in its current, which is a, it's a 1951 building. So uh, in its current state, while it was a solid building, it isn't configured in an appropriate manner for potential use by the fire department long-term. And essentially their recommendation, it, it was to remove the building um, as part of the overall contract to clear the site to prepare it for ultimate construction of the new fire station. So what this uh, resolution does is just gives us the authorization to amend the contract that we have with the company that is currently in the process of demolishing the main structure to continue on and demolish that structure as well while they're on site. Yeah, it looks like uh, actually, again, they, they, they came in at a pretty good good price on it also. I'm very impressed with that. It's, I guess since they are on site, it does help all, help all look up in that matter. So uh, anyone have any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Uh, number 13, direct referral resolution number 101, 2425, resolution authorizing purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for the abatement of asbestos from an accessory structure on the property located at 1211 North 23rd Street to precede demolition of the structure. It should have been first. Thank, thank you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th this is the same building we're talking about um, as part of the preparation for demolition of the of the structures. Uh, we did have the, the entire property checked for asbestos, lead, things of that nature that must occur before demolition. Um, we had, again, as an alternate, we had included the abatement of asbestos in this building in the bid should we, the determination come down to remove the building, we would have it we would know what we were dealing with. Uh, the, there's actually a fair amount of asbestos in that building. And the majority of it is the corrugated steel roofing panels and the corrugated steel siding panels. Um, 
have asbestos caulk where they join and overlap the seal. And it's quite a process to remove that. Um, there's, there's some other asbestos as well, uh, door caulk, things of that nature in that building. So what this does again is essentially uh, brings our asbestos abatement contractor back in, take care of those items preceding the, the aforementioned demolition. Well, I hope we pass this. Otherwise, the other... <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair one side. That is approved. Number 14, direct referral number, resolution number 102 2425, a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to issue pressure tolerance for tr three nurseries for the purchase of street trees for the 2025 street tree planting program for the city of Sheboygan. Tim. Yes, so this is uh, what we've been doing the last few years is ordering next year's trees, the fall, the fall or just about this time frame ahead, which gives us a good opportunity to get the species that we desire ahead of maybe other communities. Uh, because, you know, sometimes there's, there's definitely a supply with different species that we want to get what we want. Uh, so I put out a, Bernie, not Bernie put it out, but, um, a purchase or a request for bids for trees. We got competitive offers from five nurseries, but really three of them, these three that are listed were the ones that were the, you know, selected because of the price and the, the species that were available. And uh, I think uh, we, I was really happy with the results. I pretty much got exactly everything I wanted, if not my first choice, my second choice. And uh, I think it's really gonna fit into our overall forestry program and diversity uh, preferences. The, there's also some of these which will be reimbursed as part of the IRA grant, IRA grant that we have. So um, I guess it's, it, it's an extra bonus for us to, to get some of that money back next year. Okay, thank you, Jim. <clears throat> I uh, appreciate all your work on this. I mean, I, uh, I also appreciate the, the fact that, you know, like we, we, when you plant them in the beds like that over the summer, you're able to, you know, to divide it out, to work out and, and keep the uh, trees going. So I, I think this program has worked out well and it, we're, we're, it's, it's nice. I've been seeing more and more trees on some of these streets that were, were laid bare from the, from the ash trees. And it's nice to see it coming to cut, you know, bringing us back to our tree city designation. So anyone else? Questions? Okay. I move to adapt the resolution. Second. It's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. And seeing as we've exhausted the agenda, the next meeting date is October 29th, 2024. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're adjourned. Thank you very much. Aye.